Hi, Gators, or the Majestic Rider. So I'm gonna show you what I do um, when I come to the barn and when I start working the horse. Okay, so the most important thing is to have the right equipment. So you'll see I use the right rope halters and leads. You might not want to use them. Some people think they're harsh. Years ago, because I worked with thoroughbreds at the racetrack, you know, we put the chain over the nose. You have to do what you have to do to have control of the horse. We don't want to hurt them, but we don't want to die in the process of training them. So now they make rope halters, and the only rope halters that are going to help you are the ones that are stiff, because they give a little bit more bite. It's like using a choke chain or one of those prong collars on the dogs. When you talk to real dog trainers who are training, you know, tougher dogs or aggressive dogs, they're going to use the equipment that helps them the most. And those dogs at most are like 100 pounds. So we're working with a thousand pound animal and they don't seem aggressive, but they can, you know, get in our space. They could become aggressive and we have to make sure they respect us and our space around us so we don't get hurt. So when you go in to first see the horse, you can be kind and loving and all of that. Um, but as once I put that halter on, I have to make sure he gets out of my space immediately, not after I take 20 steps out of the barn. So you're establishing that dominance right away. And if you've never seen it before, watch the horses in the wild. There's lots of videos or watch the mares because they immediately say, this is my space. Don't you get in it. And if you get in it, I'm going to kick you or I'm going to bite you. And you'll see how the horses actually manipulate each other to claim their space, to claim their food, their water bucker, and all those things. And so the ones that are going to get more respect are the ones that are tougher in the beginning. The ones that are, you know, not going to get the food or might get eaten out in the wild are the ones that get beat down. So you want to be top dog, as they say. So I um, use a rope halter and a um, rope lead. My lead is 12 foot long. Why do I like leads so long? Because I grew up with English and we just had six, six foot leads and they were very light. So I like these leads because if something goes wrong, if that horse starts spooking or starts being goofy or say something scares him and he takes off, I have 12 feet that I can grab. You have six, so that horse bolts and pulls back, the lead's already out of your hand. So I have a lot of leeway that I can grab that horse and do things. I also can teach the horse to step on the rope without freaking out because there's so much rope left over that I can hold the end while he's stepping on the other part. If we trail her out somewhere and he's, um, you know, I get to the place and the horse is being bad, I can lunge him with this rope because I can walk the circles or I could do the sending exercise, lots of things with this older rope. No. And make sure you tell your dog to be quiet <laughs> and behave as well as your horse. Um, I can do lots of the exercises and the stalls, which I'm going to show you with this rope, so I don't need to keep changing ropes. I do have a longer rope for lunging. I don't like the big 20-foot ropes. I think the horse is far away, so I'm always training, so I won't have as much control because all these horses are always new. So that might work with you know a horse you've had for a while, but the longest I'll go is 16 feet, and I'll actually move with the horse because I like to exercise anyhow. So I just walk the circles how big I want the circles instead of just standing there like this, going around in a circle. Okay, so let me get back on topic. So I'm gonna get the horse out. So of course you want them to like you, and so you can give them cookies when you go in, so that's what I'm gonna do. Hi, bud. And you want to be all friendly and nice, you know, just like you use your voice with your dogs. Bacon? What you doing? Stay. That's odd. So I want to get on his side so I can get the, um, on his left side. So I'm going to use the food. Come on. He's eating his hay to kind of entice him over so I get over on that side. So when you put this halter on, you'll see a little bone on the side of them. Put it down about a couple of fingers below that. You know, if you feel their nose, which is good to play around with if you've never done before, um, you'll feel the cartilage down there. You don't want to break their cartilage or hurt them, so it's better to have it too high than too low. And if you're going to do exercises with your horse, it's best to double knot this because they can slide if the horse pulls back. Okay? All right. Now when I come out of the gates and stuff, I don't mind if the gates bang because I want the horse to get used to that because that's going to happen when I ride them. So I bang everything and I let it hit him in the butt and everything. So now I caught my horse 
And bacon's a very nice horse, but I still got to keep him out of my space. So when I go to leave, if he starts walking with me right away, I'm not going to let him. So I'm going to keep him behind me, and the dog's out in the paddock. Now as I come out, I'm going to keep him back. Okay. Go boy. Now I'm going to turn him. Dog's not paying attention. And the first thing I'm going to do, lunchbox out, is back this horse out. Okay? Because that's one of the exercises you can do is, you know, so you can't lunge them or anything. You want to get their respect right away. So I'm going to practice a couple of times wiggling my rope and backing them up. Backing up, you know, they don't do that a lot on their own because it's hard, but it um, is good for their muscles and their stifles. Now you could turn them around so I could send them this way and spin them around. Good boy. And then back them up this way. So just wiggle the rope, making sure he stays out of my space. If he doesn't, I might wing this for him. Now I'm going to turn around again. I know you can't see me. I look at his hindquarters, but I've taught him all this ahead of time. Now I'm going to back him up this way. Okay. So again, if you don't have a lot of room, it's winter, and all you have is this aisle weight in their stall, you can still think of exercises to do. Just coming in here and backing them in and out is great. Now the other thing I can do is back him out of his stall. Now this door sometimes wings on that, so I'm going to hold it a little bit. Well, now I'm going to back them up. Say I didn't want them to go all the way in a stall. And this is similar to a trailer, so it'll help you with trailer loading. So I'm going to come in. He's like, am I coming in now? Good boy. Good boy. Whoa. Now I'm going to back it up and out again. So he just took one step in. It's hard for me to hold this gate and do this exercise. So come in, good boy. He's like, what? Am I supposed to come in or not? Good boy. Good job, buddy. So he hasn't done this before, this exercise. So I'm just helping him to learn it. Come on. Good boy. Whoa. Now what did he do? He came all the way in. I don't want him to do it, but I'm holding the gate. So that's a little bit hard. So let's see if I can back him up. And maybe I can use that gate and he can get used to gates behind him being pushed. We'll see how it goes. It might not work out. It might. Good boy. Lunchbox out. Back. Now he's not so sure about back in the gate. He's like, I haven't done this before. Back. Push it. My boy. Back. My boy. Back. So he's looking side to side with his head, like, what the hell am I doing? Back up, good boy. So now I'm not wiggling the rope so much, I'm putting pressure on him. Good job, buddy. So again, you might be like, why would I want him to do that? Well, one day you might be on the trail. Good job. And you get to a gate and you can't get through it forward because it's got some weird spring on it. I've had that happen many times. So if your horse can push the gate with his butt, he won't be so afraid to do it when you do it another time. So you just got to think like, I'm just going to do random stuff with my horse to make him better. But the first thing is to keep him out of your space. So you establish the dominance right when you come out of the stall. And then from there, I'm going to keep him out of my space. Okay, we're going to ride bacon and then we'll use another horse for some other stuff. Actually, I lied. I'm going to show you the sending exercise in here. Look out. Okay. So for the sending exercise, and the horse has to know how to lunge first. And then when I lunge them to turn them, I pull on their head and look at their butt. So I'm going to do the same here. So I'm going to send them this way. Now he knows how to sidle up. So in the beginning, he might get confused until he figures out this exercise. So I'm going to keep turning him. No, here I'm going to help him. Because again, he's just confused from the side of like up because I've been practicing that a lot lately. Hey. Good job, buddy. So he's got to figure out this is like the lunging exercise. So turns really wear horses out. No. Good boy. And this is just all confusing. He's like, I don't understand what the hell you're doing. Walk. 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 No. So 
I'm going to take them out here for a minute, just because there's more room till he figures it out. Walk. Walk. Good boy. Now we'll work our way back into the stall. to do this in front of their stall all day. So you're like, oh, my horse wants to go to his stall? Take him to his stall. Show him what's there. Show him that it's not so fun to be by his stall. Good job. Okay. So Bacon didn't understand that exercise so well, which is great because then you see the beginning, right? Because usually I don't do this exercise at a stall because he's just fine. But you want to give your, yourself different things to do so they get better and learn stuff. So if you ever need to send your horse in the trailer or send it in the stall, maybe you have a bad ankle or something, your horse will know how to do it. Just think of different exercises to use. 